Hey guys, so the art of sniping isn't a product of modern military mastery, but a natural process actually. Throughout history, stones were replaced with spears, then with arrows, then with arbalests, and finally with firearms. Every technological breakthrough was accompanied with an increase in the damage to the enemy and the accuracy of the shot. The main goal never changed, survive and kill your enemy before they kill you, or even better, before they even notice you. Simo Haya is considered the most effective sniper in history. It's surprising that the Finnish sniper set his record in just a few months and that he didn't even use a scope. Simo was born on December 17, 1905, in the Grand Duchy of Finland, which was in the Russian Empire at the time, in the town of Rajarvi. He was the seventh of eight children born in a Lutheran family. His childhood was full of hard work on the family farm, and the cold climate made the boy strong and patient. He went to the national school in Mytila with his older brother and was always fishing and hunting with his family. At 17 years old, Simo joined the Civil Guard, a Finnish guard corps where he was very successful at shooting and took first place in competitions in Vipuri. His hunting experience and the time spent on training helped him immensely in his sniping duties. He was able to shoot 16 rounds per minute at distances over 490 feet. Considering that he had to change his magazines that only held five bullets, that's quite an impressive rate. This ability would become a decisive factor just a few years later. In 1925, the future hero began his military service in the 2nd Mobile Battalion, was accepted to the under-officer school, and graduated with the rank of corporal. Two years later, Haya retired happily and went home, but didn't abandon his military career. Simo and his team participated in many district competitions and regularly took the top spots. For example, he hit 93 out of 100 possible points while shooting at a distance of 1,000 feet without any preliminary practice. Another outstanding quality of Haya was his high firing rate that he could maintain along with his accuracy. At 34 years old, he went to special sniper training at a training center in Udi. By late 1939, the Soviet command was gathering on the Finnish border, and the closest base had 19 infantry divisions, five tanks, and two motorized brigades and significant air forces. There were 350,000 soldiers, 2,500 weapons and machine guns, over 1,300 tanks, and 1,700 planes in total. The USSR issued an ultimatum, demanding that Finland move the border 56 miles away from Leningrad. The Finnish government refused the demands, and the USSR initiated an incident on the border. Now, Finland at the time had a population of 3.8 million, and the entire Finnish army had 180,000 soldiers and officers, about 700 weapons, 112 planes, and 32 French Renault RT-17 tanks from World War I. When on November 30, 1939, the winter war between USSR and Finland began. Thirty-four-year-old reserve soldier Simo said goodbye to his family with a simple, I'm leaving. Simo was a sniper in the 34th Infantry Regiment under command of Arne Juliantin, who was called the Terror of Morocco for his service in the French Legion. By December 7, 1939, his regiment had already been in battle against the Soviet invaders in Karelia, near the Kola Mountains. The Battle of Kola happened in extremely low temperatures, up to 40 below Fahrenheit. Unlike the Red Army soldiers who expected an easy stroll to the capital, the Finnish soldiers were outstandingly equipped for fighting in such cold. Now, the first Soviet attack was met with artillery fire and infantry and sniper fire from the Finns. The Finns also used simple but effective tactics. The flanks or the rear of advancing Soviet soldiers were attacked by many mobile regiments of skiing snipers who shot hails of bullets at their enemy 
and disappeared quickly into the forest. They used other guerrilla tactics as well. Simo Haya, like other Finnish snipers, was dressed in white camouflage with a hood sewn from simple fabric. He had warm clothes under that and wore warm boots. His face was covered with a white wool hat and mask. He was well equipped for the Finnish winters. He carried minimal food and went out at twilight, returning a day later. Taking his position, he tried to completely disappear into the snow. He kept the snow in front of his rifle completely packed down and poured water on it to keep his shots from tossing up snow. Also, when his enemies approached, he put snow in his mouth so that his breath in the freezing weather wouldn't be visible. This all made him invisible. His primary targets were the officers. At first, only the officers, Soviet snipers, and artillery aiming squads had white camouflage. After a week, Soviet soldiers decided to back off and regroup because of the huge losses. From that moment, Simo quickly became famous in military circles. His flawless shooting destroyed more and more Red Army soldiers. In the first three days of December alone, he took down 51 enemies. His final total is unknown, since the bodies were left on the Soviet side. Haya adapted his flawless sniping technique and tactics for the harsh winter conditions. The greatest distance he shot an enemy from was 1,500 feet. Simo used a sniper's weapon issued for the Defense Corps, the Finnish Sako M2830 number 60974. Now, unlike enemy snipers, he preferred to shoot with open sights. This method let him quickly find a target unlike using a scope whose glass would fog up and easily be covered in the winter. A glare on the lens often gave away a sniper's position as well. Additionally, using a scope required a sniper to keep his head a few inches higher, meaning he was at greater risk of being killed. He was also shorter at 5 feet 3 inches tall, which helped him in battle. It was easy for him to hide. Besides a sniper rifle, he used a machine pistol as well, the Suomi KP-31 for close-range fighting. Information about a high-class sniper quickly spread throughout the whole front lines, raising the soldiers' spirits in the Finnish army. Simo was called the White Death by the Red Army. Now most of us have heard of Finnish snipers who set up ambushes in trees, so-called sniper's nests. But such solitary positioning in battle conditions doesn't give the snipers much of a chance to descend, and even minor injuries can lead to a lethal fall. Legends about the snipers' nests arose probably because of platforms and trees for Finnish artillery correctors to observe from. Actually, snipers in white camouflage secretly moved on skis to their position and carefully got ready. Thick, warm clothes helped them control their pulse and breathing. Simo, the White Death, had a good sense of direction, too. This was his land, and he was an excellent hunter. Last year, a relative of Simo accidentally found a soldier's memories notebook written by Simo himself just a few months after the war ended. The memories aren't very long, just 10 pages in total. Before Christmas 1939, correspondent Mika Valtari took a picture of me and another soldier as if I was some kind of miracle. At that time, my list of sins was 150 reds in horizontal positions, wrote Haya. Military Chapman Eni Rantama wrote in his diary that from the beginning of the war to March 6, 1940, Haya shot 259 Red Army soldiers with his sniper rifle and 250 with his 9mm Suomi KP-31 machine pistol when he was in the regiment. Over that time, Simo was awarded with the Medals of Freedom 1st and 2nd grade as well as the Crosses of Freedom, 3rd and 4th grade. After the war, he received a specially established Silver Cola Cross. A real hunt began for the experienced sniper. Special groups of counter-snipers searched for him, spreading anti-infantry mines around, shooting potential areas with artillery rounds. The White Death seemed invulnerable, but a week before the war ended on March 6, 1940, 
Hayao was seriously injured to the left of his lower jaw. The exploded bullet destroyed the lower part of his face and shattered his bone. Simo lost consciousness and awoke in a hospital only on March 13th, the day the war ended. He was in a Helensky hospital for a long time, and the wound required careful care and frequent surgeries. His jaw was put back together using fragments from his femur. In total, Simo had 26 surgeries. Due to the serious injury, despite his requests, he wasn't taken into the active army for the Continuation War from 1941 to 44, soon after the war. After World War II, Haya had completely recovered, but his home was in the area given away in the peace agreement, so the veteran had to begin his life again from scratch. Simo started a farm where he built a small, modest-looking home and became a successful producer of bread-hunting dogs and a fox and deer hunter. He lived on the farm as much as he could. Two years before his death, Haya moved to a retirement home for veterans at Hayman, where he died in 2002 at the old age of 96. When he was asked in 1998 how he became such a good sniper, Haya answered very simply, practice. Simo didn't think he was a hero and fairly humbly described himself in interviews given just before his death. I did what I was told to and did my best. Simo Haya, nicknamed the White Death, became a symbol of Finnish resistance to Soviet aggression, like the Molotov cocktail, a mix of alcohol, tar, and kerosene to destroy tanks. The name is meant to be a cocktail for Molotov. The name came after on the eve of the war, with the USS Minister of Foreign Affairs Molotov announced in a propaganda speech that tomorrow we'll be dining in Helensky. The dinner was canceled. In the Winter War, Finnish alcohol producers sent over 500,000 bottles to the front that would be used for the world-famous cocktails. They were used to destroy 482 Soviet T-28 tanks in different ways. Officially, during the 105 days of the war, out of the million Soviet occupants that participated in the battle, the Red Army's losses were as follows. 126,000 soldiers killed, dead from wounds or missing in actions, 264,000 seriously injured with injuries leading to handicaps, and most historians think these numbers are significantly too low. From a letter from a dead Red Army soldier that was found by Finns on the battlefield, we are finishing a two-day march now without having food. The field kitchens don't cook. It's terribly cold, and we have many sick and freezing. Our commanders can't explain why we're here, and can't determine how to go in this strange land. We're black from mud like chimney sweeps and are collapsing from exhaustion. The soldiers are covered in lice. We are sick and many of us have lung infections. We are promised the war will end by Stalin's birthday on December 21st, but who would believe that? During the battles in Finland, there was an idea of the spirit of the Winter War, which means the unity and preparedness to sacrifice oneself to defend one's country. Well, that's all for today. Be sure to leave a like and a comment, and we'll see you again next time.